Hey y'all and welcome back to Mulberry Branch Farm. My name is Ashley. If you're new here, welcome. If you are returning for much more of the goatee madness that's going on outside or anything in the garden, welcome back. I'm excited to have you and I love that you spend your time with us. Today, I'm gonna go in a little bit of a different direction than what we might be used to. Today, we're gonna be in the kitchen. And the reason we're in the kitchen is because of fermented February. Anna over at the Fermented Homestead every year has this wonderful collaboration called Fermented February. And it is when she gets a lot of us creators on YouTube that have our own homesteads and we're really used to doing self-sufficient things um, all come together and we do kind of a little bit of fermentation. And this goes from anybody from beginners to people that ferment all the time for health benefits, maybe that's the only way they can digest and gain all the nutrients from the food that they need, or they just think it's a lot of fun, or they're like me and it's like, hey, it's something new, let's get to it. And here is my ferment. But before we talk about it over here, I just wanna let you all in a little on some of the perks of fermented February, not so much for me, except for you wonderful people visiting our channel and learning hopefully along with us, but, there are prizes. There are prizes. And who can say no to prizes? I, I cannot. Prizes. 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 Every week of Fermented February on Monday on Anna's channel, The Fermented Homestead, she'll have nice live action going for y'all and she'll be doing a drawing every week on Monday um, all the way up until March 1st. The, the whole gist of this thing is if you comment down in the comment section, She's gonna randomly be pulling a comment for the grand prize drawing, but none of this will be possible at all without Hostools. Now Hostools will be giving away a variety of fermenting kits, gardening tools, the whole shebang. If you guys aren't used to shopping at Hostools, I'm very familiar with them. They sell wonderful seeds and gardening, um, gardening equipment, which is wonderful because even though it's February, we are in Grow Zone 5B, which means here in a few short weeks, we'll be starting our seeds inside and cold sowing has already begun here. So if you like gardening and you like growing the things that you might wanna ferment, Hostels has a large variety of garden seeds, garden equipment, and they're just all around a wonderful family owned business. So thank you Sheila and Hostels for sponsoring the giveaways through Fermented February. We all really appreciate it. So this wonderful creation, I know there's a glare from behind you guys, but this, this is a SCOBY. That means that it is a symbiotic culture of bacteria and yeast, AKA like a science experiment. And I created it and I named it, but you guys don't get to hear that until later on. So the reason I really wanted to start with a SCOBY is I love to try new things, things that I've never tried before. And I've never tried kombucha. And when I started reading about kombucha and all of the different nutritional properties, the values, the pros and cons, everything that goes into making a dietary and a nutritional choice, I was really interested by this. Mostly because I think it's really cool. It looks really gross, but it makes wonderful stuff. And I was a lot like you maybe. Maybe you don't know what a SCOBY is. Maybe you don't know what kombucha is. But if you go to Mr. Google Pants, there's lots of people out there that are ready to tell you exactly what it is, what it does, and why it's worth trying. So let's take a look at Google Pants. So according to Healthline, kombucha SCOBY. What it is and how to make one. This was pretty much the site I used as my go-to to figure out how the heck to do this. Kombucha is a fermented beverage enjoyed for its unique flavor and powerful health benefits. So this is basically saying that you can make your own SCOBY by using tea and sugar. I love that it says the SCOBY is a thick rubbery and cloudy mass that aids the fermentation process. Very alluring. And then I got to this picture and I thought for sure it looked like flan. And who doesn't love flan? But that, my dear friends, is a SCOBY. That is a thick, thick SCOBY. So according to this, all you're going to need is black sweet tea or green tea, uh, a little bit of sugar so that your SCOBY has something to eat and nibble on, and you're going to need a starter culture. I decided to go with a kombucha company from Amazon. I saw a lot of really good reviews on this, so this is what I use, but this, I love this, I didn't realize, but 
when you put your SCOBY into your um, tea, it's going to make it fizzy. So I didn't realize, but <laughs> love that. So once you've brewed your tea, you put in your sugar and let it come to room temperature. Put in your SCOBY starter and you let it sit. You let it sit for a long time. We are at week three. So this guy over here has been fermenting for three weeks. He's a pretty thick boy. We're really at that point now where it's time to start a next batch and take a little bit of this kombucha along with my SCOBY and put it in the next batch and let it create more kombucha. But I am going to try this. Fun fact, I don't like tea. I don't like sweet tea. I, I don't. I am a slave to stuff like this. And it's stuff like this that, that kills me on the inside and makes me super dependent on caffeine. And I love the fizz. So when I read about all the good nutritional values for kombucha and read that it makes it kind of fizzy and that you can dress this up with things, I figured let's try this bad boy because I'd love to kick this to the curb. We made this scoby by adding four cups of water into a saucepan and bringing it to a boil. Once it reaches a rolling boil, we put in a half cup of sugar and stir until the sugar is visibly dissolved, which means you can't see it anywhere in there. We're going to add in four bags of black or green tea, and you're going to let that steep and come down to room temperature. The reason you want to let this come down to a room temperature and not leave it too hot when you add in your kombucha starter is that you're going to kill the good bacteria. What's in the, the culture, what is in the starter is a little bit heat sensitive. So if you put that in there while it's too hot, you're going to, you're gonna kind of kill the whole process before it ever gets started. I've got some really nice cheesecloth here that I'm going to fold over. The reason that I'm folding it over is I really want this to be able to aerate and let the gases escape from this jar, but it makes sure that debris and bugs don't get in there because if it does, it can ruin the whole thing. And you might not even know that it's ruined for a little while. And now all you do is leave that bad boy alone. Leave it alone. Now SCOBYs do like to be kept around 70 degrees. I, my house runs anywhere from about 65, 68 in the winter time, but I'm keeping this in my kitchen. And I'm keeping it in my kitchen because we're in here a lot and a lot of the appliances that we use here, barring the refrigerator, make heat. So that will encourage the SCOBY to grow a little bit quicker. And I'm also gonna put this in a place where no direct sunlight can get to it because that can also affect the growth of your SCOBY. So you can keep it in a room, just like my kitchen here, just don't put it in the windowsill, put it someplace nice and quiet and just walk away from it for a couple of weeks. Or if you're like me, you look at it every single day, hoping that you can see the growth. All right, y'all, we have been at this for about two weeks. Fermented February has been working on us for about two weeks on our little SCOBY concoction. And you know what? It sat over here on this counter for about a week and the little bubbles started to appear. And I thought it was amazing because I'm like, that's what I read. I read that there should be bubbles. And then it appeared the scoby appeared and i had the oddest feeling that i needed to name said scoby so i took it to i took it to social media i figured hey my anybody on instagram or on our facebook page should be able to name our scoby and i got some really great ones i got scoby doo mr scoby there were there were lots of good ones but then mark said that he thinks it should be named scoby dick and it is stuck and here's why my scoby has raised up off of the, the tea. My kombucha scoby is a thar she blows. The white whale. Hmm? Moby dick. Thar she blows. So ever since Mark's been calling it scoby dick, I've been calling it scoby dick too. So it was growing kind of slow over here and it started to, to appear. <laughs> it was alive. <laughs> So then I decided, hey, let's see if we can speed this up. So the reason I put it over here on top of the dishwasher is that the dishwasher runs with warm water. And this surface that it's sitting on actually gets pretty warm. So I wondered if that would quicken how fast my SCOBY grew. And sure enough, it did. And 
it became a thar she blows. So now, now there sits Scoby Dick sitting on my counter. And we're almost ready to start this. So we've been at this for um, two weeks. It's been fermenting for two weeks. I'd like to go three weeks before I, I kind of break down and try and see what the ferment tastes like because I don't even like sweet tea. I don't like sweet tea, guys. I'm one of those weird, weird country folk that I, sweet tea just doesn't do anything for me. I don't like it. I like green tea. So I'm hoping maybe I can put this, um, let's go beyond some green tea and we'll go at it that way. And maybe this will pull me off of my addiction to energy drinks. And this will help me with some gut health. And there are a lot of really good health benefits that come with um, drinking kombucha, which is the reason why I'm creating the SCOBY, SCOBY dick. It might sound weird, but like I'm really freaked out about having to take it out of there. I'm a texture person. So if things feel oh. wrong to me, like it just wigs me, wigs me the heck out guys. So that paired with the fact that it looks really cool, like alien cool, I kind of do want to touch it, but we'll wait. We're at the very, very end bit of the journey of kombucha and creating our own SCOBY from scratch. So I've got my current SCOBY in here and I think I'm ready to take okay. a little bit of a taste of this even though it's not refrigerated, but it has been fermenting for about three weeks. And this is actually really good growth from what I can tell for a SCOBY in three weeks. So it just means that the environment was right, all the things came together, did the fermentation, symbiotic culture of bacteria and yeast grew and now I'm actually going to take this scoby out and I brewed some more tea last night so this has been brought down to room temperature it should be safe to put this scoby in with our tea and I'm going to also take a little bit of the kombucha that was already in here kind of like as a starter feeder I guess at least that's what I read I'm supposed to do it's the uh, moment of truth I'm a little freaked out but I'm a little excited too so I don't know if I can like really pick. Ooh, ooh. So let's see if I can just. Oh, this is kind of cool. No, don't sink. I'm gonna get tongs. <laughs> and good thing, like I'm pretty sure they're flexible. I think. What if it fall? Oh, we'll we'll deal with if it falls apart after this. Video is going to be struggling to get this thing out. Oh, there it is. There's the edge. It's alive! <laughs> it's alive! I am both freaked out and just mildly entranced by it. So I'm going to go and just get my little. Kombucha. Oh, it is fizzy. It is fizzy. I'm gonna put that in there. And then I'm going to put my little scoby. That's really cool. <laughs> so now that we've got our our scoby in there, I'm gonna go ahead and do the whole thing all over again there we go I know but I will take a celebratory shot of my three-week ferment at room temperature that smells very odd and I don't like tea so <laughs> we'll see let's go get a glass and then bottoms up and we'll give you a review of what we're actually thinking about our lovely scoby here it does have like a really tangy like almost like an apple juice type smell to it so I don't know we'll see I don't really like apple juice either so And it is fizzy. Like the fermentation worked, it's fizzy now, or it wasn't fizzy before. <laughs> My husband's watching from the, the hallway to see if I like this or not. So he gets to uh, enjoy. Cheers. <laughs> oh, that's different. I don't, it's fizzy. It has an apple-y, like a citrus. I don't know why it did that to my throat. <clears throat> it does have like a citrusy type tang to it. I can't tell that this is tea. 
So it took that the black tea that I made this with, that I brewed it with, and it, it tastes more like like a fizzy, like cider almost. Like it's got like an apple-y taste to it for some reason. And I don't know if that's because the fermentation is longer. So I'm really interested to see with a seven day ferment that Scoby Dick is working on over here for me versus the 21, <laughs> almost 22 days now, um, ferment that gave me this. But it did make it fizzy, which I think is, amazing that it took something that has no fizz and made it fizzy because of the fermentation. It's got the carbonation. It's kind of citrusy. It's not anything like the um, energy drinks that I like to drink way too much. You guys can actually see I'm telling on myself. <laughs> you can see it uh, in the frame over there, but I'm really hoping that something like this is going to be much healthier for me. And because it's got a natural, not like it's not like a carbonation, but just like a fizz. And it does taste kind of citrusy, which I tend to gravitate towards, that this would be um, a good, a nice little substitute for that. So, um, it's really interesting. It's not like a bad taste, but it, it's just, it's really different. So guys, I think that's going to do it for us today on our fermented February episode here at Mulberry Bridge Farm. Thank you so much for sticking around while we made our first SCOBY. We'll say bye to um, SCOBY Dick. And uh, I hope that you enjoyed the video, that you found a little bit of inspiration from it. I hope that by a beginner showing you how easy it is to create a SCOBY, you too are inspired to make your own SCOBY at home because it literally took nothing but maybe 10 minutes of prep and then I left it sit for three weeks straight. <laughs> so the, you really can't get much easier than that. But we thank you for spending your time here with us. Make sure that you comment below so that you are entered in for all of those wonderful giveaways that are being sponsored by Haas Tools and that Anna is being so wonderful to give away on her Monday Night Lives. So make sure that you subscribe, let us know how you felt about the video, ding the notification bells, and we're going to catch you all in the next one. We hope that you're all staying safe out there and being kind to one another. God bless you. Bye, y'all. I'm just trying to make it all beautiful for the shot. Go eat your roast beef for lunch. I want to talk to you about fermented February. Fermented February. My dentist would hate that. But before I tell you all about how to make your own SCOBY, it introduced you to my SCOBY that my husband has lovingly named SCOBY Dick. <laughs>